Coffee is either extremely good and made in Italy and gives you this special feeling or cheap from the gas station. Similar it is with motorcycles. You have motorcycles that give you this special feeling of character and that are just a work of art. But some of them lay quite in the middle. Enter the Motomarini Zei Mezzo, an Italian bike on a budget. A guardare verso il cielo. E non mi riesce di trovare la luna. Mi viene una gran voglia di chiamarla. Luna! Magari si affaccia. Sarebbe bello, no? Tu la chiami e lei si affaccia. Let's see how much Italian flavor you can get in the Moto Marini Zeimezzo. So the Moto Marini Zeimezzo comes in multiple different colors. White, like this one, red and anthracite. Also, there's a different version of the Zeimezzo. This is the STR and there's also another bike for pretty much the same price, the SCR, which I'm going to talk about later. This bike is rocking a licensed rebuild of the Versa 650 motor with 60 horsepower and 54 newton meters of torque. A proper Italian motorcycle would be equipped with some high quality build parts. This one is too. It has brakes from Brembo in the front and in the rear. In the front it's sporting dual brake discs. On top this bike is equipped with a Bosch ABS system. On top of that the front forks of this bike are fully adjustable and the rear shock is preload adjustable. So let's talk about the big elephant in the room. This bike is built in China. Wait before you click off. Motorcycle production in China has come a long way since the big mishaps of a few years back. And this bike has to be proven to be quite reliable. For example, it's equipped with the same engine as the Moto Marini X-Cape, an adventure bike that I saw on my big tours through Europe and Morocco and Italy really often. This bike wouldn't be there if it wouldn't be reliable. So let's get this bike on the road and see if it's a characterful riding experience. So we are now out with this motorcycle on the local twisty road and I have to say it's a really good feeling. I really like the wide handlebars because it gives you kind of this muscly I'm the man stance that I really like. Also the wide tank just gives a lot of confidence. Even though you don't really feel in the bike you really more feel on top of it. Really this bike can handle a curve which is so nice. I really like uh, the power of the parallel trend engine because uh, just the pull in fourth gear is amazing. It, it feels passionate, I like it. Something that I really positively noticed was how the bike portrays speed through the DFT dash. It does that better than many other bikes and also many cars and also many sports cars. Because do you know this thing where you have a digital a thing where it shows the speed and it always like when you accelerate skips the thing it skips like a few kilometers when showing it to you and I, I've never seen it in any other way except I think in a Dodge and and this is so good because um, it gives you a sense of like acceleration if you look down onto the dash like in a video game you know because the thing just spools up like like it spools up accurately it goes like 102 103 104 and I love that that is so good that is really nice because I mean the bike feels really potent and it makes you want to go fast but you get used to it I yesterday spent about three hours on that bike 
and after three hours you're like it feels still feels fast and stuff you know but you're like yeah I, I've experienced it now so um, it's still managing to portray this sense of acceleration that well through something s as simple as showing the kilometers that way is, is so cool and I, I think that's something that like other manufacturers should put more effort into also car manufacturers because in whatever car you are that stuff is always off also for a euro 5 norm and a stock exhaust the exhaust sounds nice it, it feels good on the bike and it has a good grunt to it back to the dft dash i really like the dft dash it's it's beautiful how it presents itself i always prefer manual gauges but you cannot have everything and if you actually prefer manual gauges it portrays the rpms like it would be a manual gauge and because also this thing doesn't mirror light so you can always see it which is really nice so when using you forget really that it's not manual gauges which is just cool so let's give it a quick acceleration test yes this is definitely fun also the the dft dash is really easy to navigate you have those three buttons right here which are, uh, I, I can set over to the Bluetooth music settings, I can set over to my phone for phone calls, um, I can go over to uh, the settings right here, I can have bike info. Let me pull over right here to show you more in depth. If you go into the settings, it shows you loads of info like front tire pressure, rear tire pressure, how much voltage you have on your battery, loads of nice things and how many kilometers you still have to your next service and also it's really easy to navigate because to be honest i'm not a tech savvy person i hate screens on cars and on bikes i most of the time don't even bother to use them because i'm instantly overwhelmed and this stuff is just good so let's get going again <laughs> So, after spending some time with the Moto Marini Zee Mezzo, let's talk about it. But first I have to get off all this gear. Actually, before talking about the Zee Mezzo STR, let's derail for a short moment and talk about the SCR version. Both of these bikes are basically the same motorcycle, same suspension, same everything, except the design, the, the golden color on uh, the suspension is different but it's the same suspension and you have a little bit of a different front fender and rear fender and so on the main difference is a little bit of higher uh, handlebars and also different tires the tires will probably lead to quite a different feel on the road something that's important when talking about the scrambler version both of these bikes actually have an 18 inch front wheel which is a bit more practical of road but this stays a naked bike this is a 200 kilo heavy naked bike so it will behave like that off road um, i'm not saying that you shouldn't take the scr off road uh, actually most motorcycles do really well off road like i personally ride a four cylinder sport tour and i just sent that thing off road and it's all fine so i believe that you will be completely fine with the scr but do you really want to ride a bike that you pay, I think, 7,500 bucks here in Germany? Both of the bikes are actually the same at uh, 7,500 euros. It's a question if you really want to ride a bike that expensive off-road. But it definitely could do it. It's, I think, more of a style thing. Let's be honest, I personally like the SCR styling more than this one. But getting back to the STR, I'm also really happy with the design of this bike. It really feels like a nice roadster, like driving around in the city, running some errands, just having a good time. It's a really nice city bike that can also do really, really well on the cross-country road. Um, it's not just a really practical daily, the, the, the riding position is amazing, but you will always need a backpack. You cannot strap anything down on the rear seat and there's no real way to storage anything on the bike except if you would get a tank rucksack. Also speaking of the rear seat, the rear seat is mainly for visual pleasure there. You will have a tough time putting an actual person on that. 
one of the things that was really important for me when testing this motorcycle is if it has character. If it feels playful and you just really want to enjoy riding this motorcycle. Because I personally ride a Yamaha XJ600 and that can sometimes feel a bit sterile. Um, this does not. This feels playful and amazing. Especially su such small things make the difference. The really wide handlebars give you just a really powerful feeling when riding this motorcycle and also like I said earlier the DFT dash that shows the kilometers so well really makes you want to push the bike and how the power is delivered on the bike from the middle to the more higher revs is just amazing it feels so good and also this bike allows you to carry quite a high corner speed like um, the corner speed that I was able to carry with that bike you could have definitely went faster but I, I like my license it feels like it's quite a short motorcycle. It feels really, really nimble. It, it kind of feels like if a Mazda MX-5 would be a motorcycle. And that's a good thing. So for me, this bike definitely has some character to it, to some degree. It allows for really passionate riding. Speaking of passionate riding, I also really love how the gearing is of that bike, because it allows so perfect to accelerate all the way to 100. It feels very satisfying, also compared to the other naked bike that I ride, the XJ600. And I also love the engine brake of this motorcycle feels quite strong, and but it's like in, a, in absolutely the right way. Um, it perfectly sets you up for the corners. I really like it. Also, this motorcycle really makes you enjoy riding a motorcycle. I, I mean, I do YouTube videos and I have been doing them quite a lot the last year, which led to me not really going out on my motorcycle on my own to enjoy motorcycle riding. And when I picked up this motorcycle, I was out for like three hours just enjoying riding a motorcycle for myself. And it's uh, really nice in that regard and it makes you coming back for more. Um, I remember yesterday in the evening, I. It was already nine in the evening and I just was like, oh yeah, another short spin around my block and it, it was so good. I think you can definitely speak of a bike having a fun character if you come back for more in the evening. The brakes feel really stiff and amazing and they get their job done really well. The only thing that I noticed about the ABS, especially in the rear, is that I think it comes on quite early. Uh, I always felt like I would have a little bit more squeeze in the brakes before the tire would start locking. Uh, maybe that's from me riding bikes without ABS mostly. Coming back to our coffee anecdote from the beginning, I think this bike really well lands itself in the middle and is actually really enjoyable and really nice while also still being reliable and really good on a day-to-day -day basis where also the price is still fitting. So till now I actually said a lot of positive things. I personally really didn't like the exhaust design. I think it's kind of a bad move actually uh, from Moto Marini. I mean, I really like the seat how they made it, but it makes the bike look quite uh, tiny in that sector, also with the 160 rear tire. Also then in comparison to the really big tank that the bike has. Speaking of the really big tank, the DFT dash shows how much uh, fuel you still have, but that way of showing fuel is not really accurate. When I fill this bike up fully, it says that I have a range of 260 kilometers, and when I then ride the bike, it really quickly goes down to 130 kilometers. And I now had to fuel up after 180 kilometers. I mean, I, I filled up after 160, but I think I would have had to absolutely fill up after 180. And also the, the bike doesn't show how much fuel it actually consumes. So it says that this bike is consuming 3.8 liter in 100 kilometers, but it feels like it's more consuming like five if you actually ride it. And the difference between riding the bike passionately and just cruising and the fuel consumption is really big compared to the other bikes I've ridden till now. And also all the possible concerns that you could have because the bike is produced in China, um, luckily are not applying to this bike. So that's all good. And it's a really nice and satisfying bike to ride. Which also in the price range between the MT-07 and the Triumph Speed Twin, I think, lands itself quite well. But I personally think that probably the main appeal for someone who wants to buy this motorcycle is that it's an Italian motorcycle and it manages to communicate that also with its design. So if you want something a little bit special, that's definitely an option. 
Today was actually the last day with the Zay Mezzo. I'm a bit sad about having to give it back. On this last day I still took it onto the Autobahn. And I have to say that the 15 liter tank actually reaches over 200 kilometers on the Autobahn, even at high speeds. This made me notice again how huge the difference in fuel consumption can be. As soon as this bike is on a twisty road, it really starts drinking like it's at a brunch with bottomless mimosas. By the way, this bike tops out at 175 km an hour. But this is mostly due to the gear ending there and the engine would be, I think, stronger to push it even more. So, this motorcycle was provided by the Biker Point company and I hope really you enjoyed this video. I have the links to my Patreon and my socials down in the description. And I hope I see you guys in the next video. Mm -hmm.